Hi there, I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study and this week I'll be looking at some COVID rate increases just as some countries like the US are now saying that the pandemic is over and we can see that's very much not the case. And we'd also be discussing whether you're taking these new COVID bivalent boosters this autumn and what exactly makes them different from the old ones. Also looking at some insights from the blood pressure study and why one of the things we're really particularly interested in is about blood pressure and menopause. But first, let's take a dive into COVID data from your latest reports on the app. And if we look at the graph, we can see quite a big increase in COVID, um, 144,800 cases daily at the moment. That's up 28% from two weeks ago. And most of those increases have been in the last few days. And this means that one in 37 people have the virus with the R number up at around 1.1. Highest prevalence is seen to be in Scotland, uh, Northern England, Yorkshire, etc. Uh, but not huge differences between the, the different areas. And we're probably expecting this, this trend to continue of, of increases um, up to the end of October. Now, looking at the age graphs uh, in Mortiero, it's quite interesting because you remember that last time we did um, see this slight change in the children under 18 going up. Now it's really clear they're driving this. And all the age groups are now come creeping up as well, but particularly the over 75s as well, which is more worrying because of the increased vulnerability, need to go to hospital, uh, etc. Um, hopefully, uh, this might change as the latest uh, boosters roll out. And uh, the the new boosters were made available last week for people aged 50 and over and healthcare staff. And I actually went yesterday to get mine done at St Thomas's Hospital in a walk-in clinic for staff and was given the Moderna spike vax which sounds kind of deadly uh, and powerful but um, seemed to have no different effects to the previous Pfizer ones I'd had before on me. Others are getting Pfizer uh, around the country. Now what does a bivalent vaccine mean? Well it means that half of it, that's 15 micrograms, uh, is coming a vaccine for, against the original strain and the other half is coming from the first of the Omicron strains. And the idea is that that combined immune response is much broader and stronger and therefore better. And as with previous vaccines, it should slightly reduce your risk of infection, but probably not dramatically but will considerably reduce your risk of severe infection, going to hospital, uh, having long COVID, etc., which is really important. And we really want to know if you've uh, received the, the booster. So please do log all, all your new boosters and tests in the appers. Before we've moved things around a little bit, uh, so it might be a bit confusing at first. And so you need now to click on the profile on the bottom right hand to get into where you log your tests and your vaccines. Um, so far, I've had 20,000 of you have uh, told us about your autumn boosters, log those in the app. Most 80% are the Moderna one, 15% Pfizer and 5% others. And we haven't yet switched to the uh, bivalent vaccines in the app. So for the moment, just log whether it's uh, Pfizer or Moderna, and we'll sort that out later as we update things. So we're really also interested to know about any side effects you're getting, because um, clearly these vaccines haven't been as widely tested as the other ones. We don't expect any problems, and it could be just anything like me, just a sore arm, or you might be getting some other systemic effects, such as fatigue, etc., that we saw um, with the other uh, vaccines. Um, so I, I'm suggesting uh, that you do get your booster shot when it's offered 
Uh, I think we're in for a bit of a rough time in the next six weeks in terms of large numbers of cases and risk of infection, and particularly true if you, you're in a vulnerable uh, group. Um, and obviously the more data that people log in, the better we can see how these vaccines are working and what the side effects are of potential new strains. Um, talking to my colleague, uh, Carl Friston, uh, his prediction models seem to be bearing out that uh, we had a fairly quiet September. Things would pick up again in October and peaking about the end of October, beginning of November, uh, estimated uh, five to 600,000 cases a day. That's twice as much as we saw in the last big wave, but with relatively few uh, deaths, um, peaking at no more than about 180, 190 uh, deaths a day, which is still pretty bad, but it's not uh, in the relative scheme of things. So more people infected, more mild disease, but uh, the numbers mean that some people will get it badly, unfortunately. Um, we're also seeing a potential uh, new variant around uh, B5 is the one at the moment, but we'll keep our eyes open for this uh, new BQ 1.1, which uh, the virologists are interested in. Now, let's look at the latest COVID symptoms uh, that you're giving us. And uh, you can see this list, not much change at the top of the charts. Sore throat is still there, two thirds of cases, 67%, um, which isn't reflected in government guidelines still, but we know it's uh, one of the main uh, features of COVID, followed by headache, cough, blocked nose, runny nose, etc. That what's interesting is down the bottom of the list, you can see fever at number 20. Uh, only about 12% of people are had getting fever at the moment, and that's um, much lower, despite it still being used uh, in places like care homes to detect disease. So it's pretty worthless in that uh, regard. Over 51,000 of you now have uh, completed the blood pressure study. Uh, that is amazing. This is the largest home survey of blood pressure ever in the world. And congratulations on, on being part of that. If you've recently joined the app, we want uh, you to take part in this. So you get an invite in your inbox. And this is giving us great insights into the disease that affects so many people. And we particularly want to look at uh, blood pressure and menopause and we've got over 29,000 of you that are in that um, age group that have, have taken your blood pressure so we're going to be looking at that in more detail uh, all kinds of things we can look at um, we do know that blood pressure changes over the 24 hours it generally uh, goes down at night starts creeping up just before you get out of bed uh, and reaches peak around lunchtime and then starts to slowly drift down again so the time you take your blood pressure and the time you take your blood tablet, your tablets is actually really important. Most of you are taking uh, your blood pressure measurements in the afternoon or evening, and most of you are doing it uh, sitting down, which is the correct way to do it uh, after a couple of minutes uh, rest and being relaxed. So uh, we'll bring you more insights as we get them. And of course, this is all building up for the world's biggest intermittent fasting study, which we hope to be uh, telling you more about um, in a few weeks' time. Uh, but before then, in conclusion, uh, we're still stuck with uh, COVID at the moment and uh, rates are expected to keep rising uh, quite quickly, I think, with the cold weather. It's already gone up 28% in two weeks, and the R value is 1.1. Um, so things will definitely get worse again, as predicted. Um, hopefully, you can protect yourself as much as possible. We've talked about the boosters. Do get one if you can. Tell us about side effects. Um, this will help you against the severe aspects of it. Get a flu jab if you're offered with no clue about how bad flu could be this year, but um, it's good to be prepared. And of course, uh, as it gets colder, think about um, in very crowded places wearing a mask, being in ventilated areas, etc. 
Uh, we certainly don't agree with Joe Biden that the pandemic is over just yet. Uh, do keep logging your health and your symptoms in the app every day so we can keep track of COVID as well as other illnesses and diseases that are just as important. Please remember to like and subscribe our channel and please share the app with uh, friends and family and of course support science and keep logging and thanks again.